At E3 2003, Nintendo showcased two GameCube games that would connect with Game Boy Advance, one of which was Zelda Force Sword Adventures. It was released on June 7, 2004, and was later ranked the 48th best game in Nintendo's system by Nintendo Power. Zelda Force Sword Adventures was a sequel to Zelda Four Swords, which was released on a single cartridge with Zelda A Link to the Past from Game Boy Advance. Zelda Four Swords was a rather short Zelda game, in which you and up to three buddies could explore Hyrule together. When you beat the game, you unlock a secret dungeon in Zelda Link to the Past. It was fun to play with friends, but it was just bonus material thrown in with Link to the Past. Four Sword Adventures was a full game, so my expectations were much higher. The game begins with an intro, telling of how many years ago, a young hero drew the Four Sword and destroyed Vatty. But now, dark ominous clouds are covering Hyrule. This can only mean evil is afoot. So, Zelda takes Link to check on the seal that guards the portal to the Four Sword Sanctuary. But Dark Link escapes from the portal and kidnaps Zelda and the six maidens holding the seal. Link follows Dark Link into the portal, and you are brought to the Four Sword Sanctuary. As you approach the pedestal where the Four Sword is being held, you'll see Dark Link hopping around. If you go to the pedestal, it asks you if you want to draw the Four Sword. Answer yells, and you'll be split into four links, each with a different color. But draw the Four Sword also unleashes the evil power of Batty. After being swept away by a tornado, you'll be brought to a mass grave. That's the first big change in Four Sword Adventures. Instead of wandering around Hyrule and finding new areas as you go, you go through this game by clearing levels. There are three levels in each area of Hyrule. There are any dungeons, but there are dungeon themed levels, and the third level in each area has a boss, so I guess you can count those. You might be wondering how you control four links at the same time. And well, you don't. You control Green Link, and the other links follow behind. By pressing Y, you can get all four links into full formations. This is used to solve most of the puzzles in the game. You can also change the formation by moving the C-Stick up, right, down, or left. Pressing X will let you control only one link, and to switch to a different link, press X again. This is useful when you need to stand on multiple buttons at the same time. Right away, you notice most of the graphics are taken straight from Link to the Past. The character and enemy sprites are in style finish cap, and you will also notice some effects that look very wind regular. One of the big changes is the addition of Force Gems. Force Gems are magical stones that store power to the Force Sword. You need 2,000 Force Gems at the end of each level you will be able to advance. If you get stuck at the end of a level with less than 2,000 Force Gems, you get the option of traveling back in time to get any Force Gems you might have missed. But if you can travel back in time, couldn't you just go back before value was set free? Maybe I'm thinking about it too much. Force Gems are hidden everywhere. It's usually not too big of a problem to find them, but it does take away the focus from the main gameplay. One weird thing about this game is that in most Zelda games, when you find an item like a boomerang or a fire rod, it gets added to your inventory screen and you can select it for use. In this game, when you find the item, it automatically gets equipped to the A button, and you can't hold more than one item at the same time. Meaning if I want this bow and arrow, I have to put down my lamp. And instead of just picking up keys, you actually have to pick them up and carry them to the keyhole. But you can't use your sword while you're holding a key, so if you have to run into some enemies, what do you do? You hit them with the freaking key, that's what you do. Most of the music is taken straight from Link to the Past. Some of it is rearranged though. All these things made Zelda Four Sword Adventures very different from other Zelda games, and turned some players off. The thing that made this game unique is it can be played with a Game Boy Advance, instead of a Game Boy Control. The cool thing is, whenever you enter a cave or sub area, the screen switches from the TV screen to the Game Boy screen. But if you're playing with a GameCube controller, when you enter a sub area, a window will pop up that shows what the Game Boy screen would be shown. The weird thing is, it gives the option of closing the window, thus leaving you completely in the dark. You can also play through the whole game without the full players, but what really ruins it is all the players have to use Game Boy Advances. This means you need one Game Boy Advance and one Link Cable for everybody. Without multiple Game Boy Advances and Link Cables, you can't play Shadow Battle mode either. This is a huge flaw. That's what I'll have to say about this game. If you really like Zelda, you'll like this game. If not, then the boring puzzles and long levels will probably make you want to quit before you finish it. 7.5 out of 10.